As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to create YouTube videos with tips for screenwriters. To me, being a YouTuber was better than being a president of the United States. And today we break down arguably the best gangster movie ever, Goodfellas. It's a true story of a gangster Henry Hill and an adaptation of the book Wise Guy by Nicholas Pileggi, who also co-wrote the screenplay with Scorsese. Hello, he said, yeah, my, my name is Marty Scorsese. He said, well, I'm calling it because he said, I just read your book. And he said, I've been looking for this book for years. I said, well, I've been waiting for this phone call all my life. And the rest is history. The screenplay was nominated for an Oscar, won a BAFTA, and it ranks number 41 on Writers Guild of America Greatest Screenplays list. Whenever I come across this movie on TV, there goes my next two hours. I have to watch it. But why is this movie so intriguing to watch? Well, so many things. But let's start at the beginning. Come on, fuckos, let's go for a ride. Tip number one, create an intriguing opening scene. In Goodfellas, we have a flash forward opening scene, which is also called a fabula structure, meaning that in the beginning we show a scene from later in the movie and having the audience question how we got there. It's a screenwriter's tool that can work or not, so make sure you have a good reason to put it there. Let's see why Scorsese decided to do it. And then Marty was looking at it, said, you know, it's a little slow. This is a movie, we gotta do something, we gotta hook him. So we took that out of the middle of the book, put it in the front, and he says, when he, they kill him, and then they put the trunk down, then I'll freeze on Ray Liotta looking out, and then bam, you're in the movie. So as Pelagia explained, Scorsese thought the script was too slow, so he needed to hook the audience. That was the first reason. The second reason was that this scene was always interesting to him. Reason number three, the scene is shocking because of the brutal violence. Number four, the scene has mystery to it. What's the noise in the trunk? Number five, the scene is perfectly compact, so it gives a lot of information and exposition in the least possible time. Number six, it perfectly sets up the violent and dangerous world in which Henry will be operating in. And the most important ingredient of the opening scene, it must raise a lot of questions for the audience. So after seeing that scene, our minds are racing with questions. Who are those three brutal guys? Who is this guy in the trunk? How and why did they kill him? But the opening scene wouldn't be perfect without a great scene ending. And this scene ending is so amazing that it became most quotable line in gangster movies ever. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. So with this line, we perfectly end the opening scene while at the same time we hook the audience for the rest of the movie. As Billy Wilder said, grab them by the throat and never let them go. So now we have the audience hooked, but now we have another problem. Will the audience want to follow Henry as a protagonist, who is obviously not a decent person? And here is where likability and voiceover come in, which will be our tip number two and tip number three. Let's first take a look at likability. Tip number two, how to make anti-hero likable. So Henry is not a good man, he steals, he beats people up and he cheats on his wife. Yet somehow we must make him likable enough so the audience will want to watch the movie with him as the narrator. So how do we do that? The first trick is we must play on the empathy, not on sympathy. And John Truby perfectly explains the difference between the two in his book The Anatomy of Story. The trick to keeping the audience's interest in a character, even when the character is not likable or is taking immoral actions, is to show the audience the hero's motive. If you show the audience why the character chooses to do what he does, they understand the cause of the action, empathy, without necessarily approving of the action itself, sympathy. So now let's see what writing methods should you use to make the audience feel empathy for the unlikable hero. First thing is, we must start out loving him. Scorsese skillfully structured the early portions of the film, where Henry is enthusiastic and likable, and because of that we then remain sympathetic to him throughout the movie. Second, make him an underdog, a small-time low-level wannabe who works hard to make his dream a reality. Audiences love a struggling character who goes after his dreams. Third, make him excited. To me, being a gangster was better than being president of the United States. Four, make him be surrounded by far worse guys than him. Henry is far less cold-blooded and violent than Jimmy and Tommy and he doesn't kill anybody in the movie. So because his friends are murderous sociopaths, in comparison to them, Henry doesn't look so bad. Five, when he does brutal things, let them be at least in some way justified. For example, in the scene in which he takes revenge on a neighbor who upsets his wife, he is shockingly violent. But the scene is designed with a deliberate tinge of twisted morality because he is defending his wife. 6. Make him do little good and sensitive things. 
let him puke when he's digging up Billy Bat's corpse, so we see him as a bit vulnerable. Let him make dinner for his disabled brother, so we see him as a caring person. 7. Henry is conciliating with everybody and doesn't bust anybody's balls for the money. He's kind of a peaceful negotiator when Jimmy or Tommy get too violent with their victims. Other characters in the movie all like Henry and that makes the audience like him also. There is one more great device we can use to make Henry more likable and that device is voiceover. With voiceover he is explaining to us the reasons for his choices so we get a better understanding of why he did something unlikable. His narration can be very powerful in that way, making us more tolerant for the terrible things he does. Tip number 3. How to write compelling voiceover. Many screenwriting books will tell you not to use voiceover, that it's a lazy device or a crutch, but Goodfellas is an excellent reminder for what an amazing screenwriting device it can be when done right. And Jimmy two times, who got that nickname because he said everything twice. I'm gonna go get the papers, get the papers. Let's see how Scorsese creates such a powerful voiceover. Goodfellas basically requires a voiceover because it's an adaptation of the novel, so it allows Scorsese to get all the necessary information into the film. The voiceover in Goodfellas complements good visual storytelling rather than compensating for the lack thereof. It adds another layer to what we see on the screen. It's not just Henry's Hill's story, but his inner desires. To me, it meant being somebody in a neighborhood that was full of nobodies. It works so well because Corsese uses voiceover with a distinct purpose, which is to build an intimate relationship between the character and the audience. With voiceover, Henry becomes our tour guide, our inside man, and lets us into this underworld secretive organization a very few people have access to. Saturday night was for wives, but Friday night at the Copa was always for the girlfriends. We feel privy to the inside information to be able to know what's really going on behind the curtains and the ins and outs details of the mob life in New York. If you're part of a crew, nobody ever tells you that they're going to kill you. And the more secretive the subject matter is, the more we are interested. Never ran on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. But remember, this only works if the subject matter is fascinating and if the narrator is telling us the information we don't already know. Voiceover can also be used for the element of surprise and in Goodfellas it is masterfully used for a major story reversal. Henry's narration explains at length how Tommy will get made and how Jimmy is happy for him. At this point in the movie, we completely trust Henry's narration. See, it's the highest honor they can give you. It means you belong to a family and a crew. So when the scene arrives and Tommy, instead of being made, receives a bullet in the back of the head, it's pretty shocking and a huge surprise for the audience. Scorsese also uses narration to give quick background information and explainers in a clever way. For example, he explains why they are called good fellas. You know, we always called each other good fellas. Like you'd say to somebody, you're gonna like this guy, he's all right. He's a good fella, he's one of us. Voiceover can also be an efficient way to show various perspectives on the subject matter. Besides Henry's, we also have a voiceover from Karen. He was an exciting guy. He introduced me to everybody. And with her narration, we get a female perspective from the outside person and how also she becomes fascinated with this world of privileges and how and why she falls in love with Henry. Which brings us to the next tip. Tip number four. How to construct a riveting love story. First, you must resist having characters immediately like each other. Instant attraction usually doesn't work in a movie. Let the relationship realistically evolve. Give them some obstacles to overcome. Maybe make them even hate each other in the beginning. I couldn't stand him. Henry and Karen were forced to go on a first date and they were bored. Henry then also stood her up on a second date. Those are some great obstacles for the start of the relationship. Then, after the initial obstacles, create two scenes where the lovers impress each other. Let's first look how Karen impressed Henry. You got some nerve standing me up. She impressed him because she had some balls, like the guys with whom he is hanging out all day. She also showed him that she is tough and self-respecting. Then we have Henry impressing Karen in a scene that's probably the most famous tracking shot in cinema ever. Henry takes Karen through the rear entrance of the Copacabana Club in New York to a soundtrack of Then He Kiss Me by The Crystals. It's an ultimate seduction scene where she is being introduced to his world with all the privileges, all doors open for them and everybody wants to be their friend. In the third stage, 
Show the strengthening of a relationship, the good and fine times together, falling in love, getting married. In stage four, make sure that the relationship gets tested. And this relationship gets tested a lot. An old friend harasses Karen. Will Henry help her? Henry beats him up really bad. Will she overlook this extreme violence? Karen finds out he is cheating on her. What will she do? Henry decides to leave Karen. Will he go back? You gotta go home. Henry goes to jail. Will Karen help him now that he is imprisoned? this stuff in for you every week. Now of course this is a crime genre, so the scenes can be extremely dramatic and violent. But in every love story you need to invent smart obstacles for your love couple. Just modify them to your story world. Also make sure to choose the right characters with the right characteristics. For example in Goodfellas, Henry has girlfriends on the side. This is just a norm in a wise guy world he lives in. Now if Karen would be a quiet polite woman who would just accept that like the other wives of Goodfellas do, then the relationship would fall flat. But because Karen has a short temper, is extremely jealous and refuses to let Henry off the hook, now we get some spectacular scenes. I knew the motivation of jealousy and wanting to hold on to her man and I understood those things. Also the scenes of that relationship are very well chosen. They all serve their purpose to construct a strong love story, while at the same time they are very interesting, dramatic and suspenseful. They are amazing scenes in general and all very memorable. Tip number 5. How to develop memorable scenes. Goodfellas has more outstanding scenes than any movie should be entitled to. What did I tell you? You don't buy anything, you hear me? Don't buy anything. We already talked about the opening scene and the Copacabana scene, but there is more. Go get the shine box, meet the mobsters, eating with Tommy's mom, prison garlic slicing, and the famous I'm going to kill you look from Robert De Niro. And we will talk more about those scenes in our Patreon video. But here we must dissect one of the most memorable and suspenseful scenes, not just in Goodfellas, but in cinema in general. How am I funny scene? Let's find out why this scene is so memorable. First and most important reason, suspense. The scene is suspenseful just because we set up beforehand that Tommy is this crazy, volatile character who can blow up in any second. We're terrified of what he's capable of. I'm funny how? I mean funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you, I make you laugh. Second thing, the scene has conflict and stakes. The stakes are as high as possible. Tommy could kill Henry right there in any second. It has reversals. It starts out relaxed with jokes, but then bit by bit it becomes more and more serious. How the f am I funny? What the f is so funny about me? Tell me. And then we get an unexpected surprise and comic relief in the end. I almost had him! I almost had him! Frankie, was he shaking? <laughs> the scene also perfectly reveals character. We learn everything about Tommy in this interaction and what we can expect from him later in the movie. It has visual action. We have the waiter come in and interrupt the scene, after which Tommy attacks him. Then we also have people sitting around Tommy and Henry and we see how their facial expressions gradually change from laughing to dreadful seriousness. The scene wouldn't be half as powerful if there would be just Tommy and Henry in it. So if possible, always include extra characters. This scene was improvised from the actual events that happened to actor Joe Pesci. In rehearsals, actors were given freedom to do and say whatever they wanted. Once we had the improv down, then we had to lock it. Scorsese then made transcripts of these rehearsals, took the lines he liked the most and then structured a scene with dramatic principles. If we take a close look at the scene, it has a flawless structure. It has a setup, a call to action, <laughs> turning point, climax, and resolution. And you should structure your scenes like little short films if you really want to create epic scenes. You should also copy Scorsese's process, take amusing situations from real life, improvise them, then put them into a proper dramatic structure with suspense, conflict and stakes. And you will also create amazing scenes. Now a very big reason why this brilliant scene and many other scenes in Goodfellas are so memorable is that Scorsese created such an authentic world. And how he managed to do that we will explain in tip number 6 in our Patreon video. 
for which you can find the link in the description below. In this video on Patreon, we will also talk about major story reversals, how music is connected to screenwriting, and also how to keep your readers constantly on their toes with unpredictability. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And let us know your favorite tip. Our favorite is tip number 5. How to develop memorable scenes. Now go write your own outstanding screenplays and we we'll meet again in the next video. And now it's all over. <laughs>